Welcome back to Amashirai Recap. Today, I will recap Anti-Magic Academy 35th Test Platoon. The story begins with a student who attends an Anti-Magic Academy. He is named Kusanagi Takaru. He was always looked down upon and insulted by the students at school because Takaru can only use an ordinary katana. Takaru is also the chairman of Platoon 35, the weakest platoon because its members are low-ranking and incompetent in carrying out missions. Member Platoon 35 consists of Yuzagi and Sujinami Ikaruga. Although they have already half-year together, they have not been able to complete a mission at all. On the other hand, a student named Utori Aoka transfers to an anti-magical school because she has broken the rules on a mission and killed a wizard. So the principal transfers Utori to Platoon 35. Then the principal introduced a new member, Utori Aoka, to them. Utori is the adopted son of the school principal, and an exemplary student who has completed many missions. After that, they intend to carry out a mission to catch the witch who stole the magic heirloom. Takaru and Utori will attack from the front while Yuzagi watches hideaway enemies. And Ikaruga kept an eye on the situation and provided information to help Takaru with Utori. The two of them will ambush the enemy after Yuzagi launches the shot. But Yuzagi fires a shot at the wrong building. Seeing Takaru using an ordinary katana, they insulted him. Here that made Takaru angry. <laughs> but Ikaruga managed to calm Takaru down with her cute voice. <laughs> Meanwhile, Utori manages to defeat the criminal. Because he doesn't want to be caught, he releases instant magic and uses Dragoon. Utori wasn't scared at all and continued to shoot. In the end, the Dragoon took damage. After completing the mission, Takaru fell and accidentally touched Utori's boobs. The next day Utori doesn't want to go on a mission with Takaru and the others, because Utori thinks they are not good at carrying out the mission. But after seeing Utori's hand hurt, Takaru decides to accompany her. Then they headed to Valhalla's place. While successfully infiltrating there, Utori saw that the criminals there had kidnapped children to be used as experimental materials. Knowing that makes Utori go out of control and want to kill the villain, Takaru tries to stop her because if Utori does that, she will be expelled. The next day Utori met the principal. The principal wanted Utori to get along with Takaru and the others. The principal also said that there are students from Platoon 35 who became Relic Eater candidates. Relic Eater is a very powerful force and has awareness. Even though she already knows their prowess, Utori still doesn't recognize them as comrades. On the other hand, there is a girl witch named Nikato Mary. She meets Haunted, who is one of the leaders of Valhalla. Mary works together with Valhalla to eliminate discrimination against witches. Then Haunted uses his powers to wreak havoc in the city. On the other hand, Utori tells her past to Takaru. The Utori family was slaughtered as a result of the actions of witches. That's why Utori hates witches and wants to kill them with her own hands. Then suddenly, there was an explosion in the city, and the two of them rushed there and fought the witch and the evil spirit. The headmaster explains that it is the spirit of an ancient hero named Einherjar. Because the Einherjar headed to school, the headmaster allowed students to fight. Utori fought the Einherjar alone. She borrowed temporary power from Vlad, who was a relic eater. With that, the wounds on Utori's body can heal again. But Utori has to present her blood to Vlad. <laughs> After successfully injuring Einherjar, suddenly, Utori couldn't use Vlad. Luckily Takaru came to save her. Takaru fought Einherjar using an ordinary katana, and was assisted by Ikaruga with Yuzaki. Takaru was hit by a magic attack from the Einherjar, which injured him badly. Oh! <laughs> 
When Takaru was dying, a relic eater named Lapis suddenly appeared. She wanted to give her power as long as Takaru made his contract. Takaru gains a strong power. He directly fights Einher Jar alone. Lapis strengthened Takaru's weapon. With it, he could defeat the Einher Jar. After that, Takaru rested beside Utori, seeing Takaru had tried hard to protect her. Utori also began to recognize Takaru as a partner and respect him as the chairman of Platoon 35. Because Lapis had a human-like form, the headmaster made her Takaru's younger sister so that others would not suspect her. The headmaster also asked Platoon 35 to work with Mary and keep it a secret that Mary is a witch. Because Utori hates witches, they don't get along and even compete in school lessons. Mary explains why she is at that school. She wants to prove that witches are not bad people and that there are still good witches in the world. Previous Mary has betrayed by Haunted because he violated their cooperation agreement. Haunted had killed innocent residents and erased even Mary's memory. Then Yuzagi pointed out the autumn tournament. Of course, Platoon 35 will participate. Mary will stay at Takaru's house so he can keep an eye on Mary. But Utori wants to go with them because Utori can't leave them alone. Meanwhile, Takaru wanted to go shopping first. When he returned home, he accidentally saw Mary's beautiful body with Utori. A few days later, the tournament begins, and Takaru's team struggles in the match because they still can't work together. But Mary can help them win the first match. After that match, their relationship with Mary became even closer. But Utori finds information about Mary in the room of the principal. Mary got involved with Valhalla and was accused of killing someone even though it was Haunted's act. When the second round of matches started, Haunted suddenly appeared who wanted to take Mary. Even though the security forces surrounded the place, Haunted created a barrier. So Takaru and the others were trapped in the barrier. When fighting Haunted, he switches to hero mode and uses the destructive sword Daneslave. Even though Takaru had trouble fighting him, Takaru managed to attack Haunted by changing the shape of his sword. On the other hand, Utori confirms that Mary is not a criminal. It turns out that Utori has already conducted an investigation beforehand. Therefore Utori asked the principal to deactivate the existing magic necklace on her neck. With that, Mary could use her magic against Haunted. The members of Platoon 35 work together to defeat Haunted. Meanwhile, Takaru absorbs Mary's magic power to launch a strong attack so that Haunted is seriously injured and immediately runs away from there. A few days later, the festival will be held at school. A student named Rime explains about the festival. They will get a coin if they join the festival, and the coins can be exchanged for points value and real money. Hearing that made Takaru excited. Because his parents have left a huge debt to Takaru, Takaru even had to take care of his younger sister. When Yuzagi met Rima, she was scared to the point of fainting. Takaru, who saw this, immediately approached her and brought Yuzagi who had fainted, to the school medical room. Meanwhile, Utori met the student council president, Nagaru, and her secretary Shizuka. Nagaru tells about a wizard named Mephistopheles who owned the ability to control the human mind. One of Nagaru's comrades had been controlled, but Nagaru and Shizuka managed to survive. Nagaru suspects Ryama is the mastermind behind it all, and Nagaru asks Utori to investigate Ryama. Meanwhile, Yuzagi, who has regained consciousness, tells Takaru she will be engaged to Ryama. After that, Yuzagi wants to stop by Takaru's house. She intends to have a child with Takaru to cancel her engagement. However, when she wanted to do it, Utori and the others suddenly came to Takaru's house. Takeru, 
Takaru and the others want to solve Yuzaga's problem. They intend to get many points for festivals later so that Yuzaga's grades improve and she can convince her parents to call off the engagement. Ikaruga throws a cosplay party so they can win the festival. Before the festival starts, Utori notices Ryama is making a magic circle at school. After using Vlad's power, Utori was sure it was mind control magic. The student council confirmed that Ryama had controlled their previous comrade. Nagaru was also aware that Mephisto had taken over Shizuka's body, so she immediately shot her. When Utori wanted to catch Ryama, suddenly Shizuka was there behind. In the end, Utori's body was taken over by Mephisto. Meanwhile, Nagaru is still alive because she is wearing a bulletproof vest. Nagaru asked Takaru and Mary to save Utori who was in danger. She also explained that Mephisto aimed to get her locked body at school. On the other hand, Ryama takes Yuzagi to a place where he wants to make love to Yuzagi forcefully. But Takaru arrives just in time and is about to punch Ryama's bastard in the face. <laughs> Ryama had a mental attack against Takaru, and he even peed in his pants. Then Yuzagi immediately met Ikaruga and got two special bullets from her. With that bullet, Yuzagi can destroy Mephisto's soul. At the same time, Mephisto wants to kill Mary because she tried to erase the place's mind control magic. Takaru tries to stop Mephisto, but she tries to trick Yuzagi and says that Mephisto is on the body of Takaru. Even though she was confused, she managed to shoot Mephisto who entered Utori's body. A few days later, Ikaruga went to the headmaster. He showed her a cell of a dark elf named Lost Matrix, and the alchemists wanted to make weapons using it. It is revealed that Sujinami Ikaruga is a human with artificial intelligence that alchemists have created. That's why the principal asked her to tell him the whereabouts of the real Lost Matrix, but Ikaruga refused. On the other hand, there is an older sister from Ikaruga named Sujinami Isuka. She has collaborated with Valhalla so that Haunted can slaughter the alchemists. With it, Isuka could do research on dark elf cells. Felt that Ikaruga had been behaving strangely and headed towards the mysterious place, Takaru and the others tried to keep up. Ikaruga contacted Isuka. It turned out that the original Lost Matrix was in Ikaruga's hands. She would hand it over to Isuka. In return, Ikaruga wanted to see research on resurrecting the Dark Elves. But suddenly, Ikaruga was attacked by someone. Even Takaru and the others were also involved in the battle. Even though Takaru managed to find Ikaruga, he was seriously injured by the attack from the troop. Ikaruga immediately contacted Isuka to send reinforcements so Takaru and the others could be safe. Otherwise, Ikaruga would not hand over the lost Matrix. Moments later, Isuka managed to bring the three of them into prison. Isuka told them about her past. Ikaruga and Isuka are artificial humans who are only interested in research. But one day, Ikaruga feels interested in family relationships. She also created a monoless baby elf named Canaria deemed a failed experiment so the alchemists would banish Ikaruga because she didn't want to die. Ikaruga ran away and took Lost Matrix with a baby elf, but the elf baby had disappeared, so Ikaruga went alone to the anti-magic school. Ikaruga takes the injured Takaru to a safe place for treatment. She also wanted to give Takaru a night service as a parting gift. <laughs> But that was just a lie so she could inject a paralytic drug into Takaru. So Takaru couldn't move, while Ikaruga intended to meet Isuka alone. Utori, along with the others, is released from prison. Then the principal came to meet them and allowed them to use weapons because they would fight against the alchemy army. Meanwhile, Takaru could move, and he immediately used his strength to jump into battle. Utori will also accompany Takaru in line front, while Yuzagi and Mary will support them from a distance. On the other hand, Ikaruga explains that she wants to destroy the place and save Isuka from alchemy because she is always forced to research and make her suffer. Ikaruga combines Lost Matrix into the body so that Ikaruga becomes a dark elf who can use magic easily. However, suddenly Haunted appeared there and immediately killed Isuka.
Ikaruga became panicked and destroyed the place with her power. Isuka could no longer be saved. At the last moment, she wanted Ikaruga to enjoy her life. While Haunted instead released a wyvern, Takaru tried to divert the wyvern's attention so Yuzagi could attack the wyvern's back. They managed to open the wyvern's core, but Takaru was running out of energy. Mary gives magic energy to Takaru so he can get back up to defeat the wyverns. <laughs> A few days later, Ikaruga delivered a mission to arrest the perpetrators who wanted to make magic heirloom transactions. But while carrying out the mission, they must disguise themselves in entertainment venues. When they wanted to catch the target in that mission, they made a mistake because they had caught the wrong person. <laughs> Ultimately, they completed the mission and got a magic heirloom ring. When the ring was put on Takaru's hand, suddenly, the girls got drunk and tried to make out with Takaru. <laughs> the next day they went to the beach, and something strange happened because the summer on the beach never ends. That's why they headed there to investigate. Before that, they had fun together and enjoyed the beauty of the beach. Then there was a gigantic monster that had attacked someone. Lapis used a fishing rod and Yuzagi with Mary as bait to attract the monster's attention. Seeing that there were two beautiful girls, the monster immediately attracted them to the bottom sea. Takaru uses Lappy's power to save them and defeat the monster. After the monster was defeated, summer on the beach ended. Takaru meets his younger sister who is currently in detention. She is named Kusanagi Kaisuke. Takaru tells about Utori with the others to Kaisuke. Can't bear to see Kaisuke always alone, Takaru wants to find a way to free Kaisuke. After that, the headmaster chained Kaisuke because she had the power to destroy the world. Kaisuke dreams that Takaru leaves her alone and lives with another woman, which triggers Kaisuke's power to go out of control and want to destroy the place. Someone named Kurigane heads straight there to stop Kaisuke. On the other hand, Takaru and the others carried out a mission to catch a witch. <laughs> But they failed to catch him, and there was a battle involving residents. Takaru chased after the witch, but suddenly he ran into Kaisuke. Takaru realizes that Kaisuke's power has gone out of control, and escapes from custody to meet him. While the previous prison camp was destroyed, even Kurigane was seriously injured. Takaru led Kaisuke to safety. He explained to his friend that Kaisuke was his younger sister. She has very strong power but cannot control the power. Knowing that Kaisuke was missing Takaru, they gave them one hour so that Kaisuke could enjoy time with Takaru. <laughs> then Kaisuke asks Takaru to kill her because her power has become stronger than before. If left unchecked, Kaisuke will likely kill innocent residents. Takaru refused and wanted Kaisuke to live with him, but if Kaisuke turned into a monster, Takaru promised to kill Kaisuke with his own hands. On the other hand, the Valhalla group named Kusanagi Orochi and Kaneria intended to kidnap Kaisuke. Meanwhile, Takaru and Kaisuke meet a student named Kaiouya, and a debate ensues between those who make them have to fight each other. But Kurigane stopped their fight because it endangered the local people. The principal was also there. He said that Kaisuke would be taken to the detention center. After that, Orochi and Kaneria attacked an airplane but didn't find Kaisuke there. It turns out that Kaisuke is in the car guarded by Kurigane. Meanwhile, Takaru and Utori were jailed for allowing Kaisuke to be in a public place. But the student council president freed them both from there. Also, Yuzagi and the others are ready to go to Kaisuke's place to protect her from the Valhalla group. On the other hand, Orochi fights Kurigane to take Kaisuke, while Kaiouya takes Kaisuke to escape from there. However, he awakens Kaisuke and wants to kill her. Takaru succeeds, arrives on time, and fights against him. In the end, Takaru manages to beat him. Then suddenly came Haunted, who immediately stabbed Takaru in the back. 
thinking that Takaru was dead made Kaisuke berserk and spread her power throughout the city. Kaisuke's powers have wreaked havoc throughout the city, while the headmaster and the director of alchemy named Sujinami Suzaku only watched all the chaos from the top of the building. Utori must defeat Haunted to save Takaru. <laughs> Because her attacks don't work on Haunted, Utori decides to make a full contract with Vlad. With Vlad's full power, Utori can throw Haunted far away. Ikaruga and the others pick them up in a car. Ikaruga explained that all of them couldn't stop Kaisuke. Even Kaisuke can't be killed by them and will continue to be immortal because she doesn't want to be killed by other people except for her brother, Takaru. Meanwhile, Takaru meets Lapis. Lapis will give her full power to Takaru as long as Takaru can discard his humanity and fully accept Lapis. Because Takaru agreed to it, he got the power of the God Hunter. <laughs> Takaru, who regained consciousness, immediately protected his friends. Takaru also said farewell to them because the power was obtained by sacrificing his soul. When he arrived at Kaisuke's place, Haunted suddenly confronted Takaru there. Takaru didn't have much time because the Relic Eater ate the soul. That's why Takaru focused his strength on one attack. <laughs> After that, Takaru calmed Kaisuke's tantrums, and they could end all the chaos in the city. But Takaru still can't save Kaisuke. He intends to bring Kaisuke to come with him to Platoon 35. And that is the end of the video. Remember to subscribe and like this video, so see you in the next video.